important stuff out of the way. Oh, I know, exactly. <laughs> Absolutely. There's a little bit of an echo, Walter, I think. Yeah, sorry, I just uh, in and I also have the mobile app open, so I was creating an echo loop here. No uh, problem. Sounds like I missed anything important in the first five minutes. So. No, no, you did not. I was just passing time. Uh, okay. Anyways, uh, thank you everyone for joining. Uh, appreciate the great turnout. Uh, thank you everyone for catching the uh, the time change. Unfortunately, the U.S. not only do we have daylight savings time, we have it at a different time than the rest of the world. So uh, I appreciate you uh, uh, catching that uh, that difference. Uh, as, as a reminder, meetings are recorded so others can uh, keep up with what we're doing. So uh, we will get right into it. Uh, I don't think we have to do any introductions. Uh, next steps on SCAL. Uh, I just wanted to mention that I uh, had talked with um, Federico some more and uh, Felix, and we are all going to be uh, co-mentoring um, a potential Google Summer of Code project for uh, setting up uh, a, a net JSON config plugin or uh, to um, to scal so that uh, hopefully as long as we get a student that is good for that that should be good um, any thoughts on that Felix or I don't think there's much more to it um, I think I think it's a good project it's a good application of uh, of scal um, looking forward to getting started with it Awesome. Great. Great. Um, not, not much more with that. Uh, I've, uh, I've just asked Felix uh, to um, look into beginning on his proposal for the next milestone of Scal. I know there were a couple features that people had asked for. The main ones were event um, handling events, particularly that were outside of Scal. Um, to do this, uh, Felix, uh, if you want, you want to kind of give your uh, request to um, get more feedback. Would you like to give me give some more detail, Felix? Well, for that, I, I basically need to know um, how people are interested in processing those events, what they're going to use them for, um, what are some example use cases of how they want to integrate this. Um, because with events, there's lots of different ways to, to do that. Um, there's ways of trying to keep track of everything uh, internally or actively polling everything that's supported or just having the subsystem themselves create notifications for changes and there's uh, it's just so many ways of doing it and uh, to be able to make a good design decision there and how to implement it I need to know um, what people want to use this for what matters to, which parts matter to, to them because I want to make sure that the end result is as simple as possible while still uh, being able to satisfy all the different use cases. And so I was hoping for, um, well, I was hoping for a lot of feedback, but at this point I would be happy if there was even some feedback on this. Definitely. No, I, I totally agree with you, Felix. Does anybody have any initial feedback? Like, I know there's there's some sense that people just said, well, we want more event support. Is there any details that anyone has here? All right. Well, um, I would ask people that to really look at this and try to figure out what is it that you need events for, how do you want them handled, things along those lines, because um, it, it seems like people, you know, we do want these these features added, but we, but as Felix said, he needs to have a very clear understanding of what these are being used for and what people want it used for. Um, so uh, again, please, 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 uh, let's let's get that feedback as quickly as possible. Um, this is this is very important for moving forward. There were some emails exchanged between Walter and uh, Felix on that topic, if I'm not wrong. Yeah, that that led to kind of doing the the simple thing. I will definitely review those emails again. Um, but I was hoping for like 
more uh, like having multiple p uh, different use cases described from from uh, different companies, different people interested in this. So I, I will definitely factor in everything that was discussed so far, um, but that's like the, I need a lot more to to be able to get a sense of what's what's important. So one question uh, uh, I got asked multiple times was uh, so, so how far are we away to have a, a common full tier 69 stack with the, the data models or something um, <coughs> which could be uh, more or less deployed in the field without uh, having uh, third party applications in there so, so a complete reference open source um, tier 69 including the other important um, things around this, from this area? I, I mean, I think part of it is, is I don't think we're, we're going to have a reference uh, TR069 client in, I would say, in the next year or so. I, I think this is really very much uh, dependent upon what uh, gets open sourced by the members um, if they get their uh, stacks out there. If they get their stacks out there, it will um, allow us to create, if people feel there's a need, to actually come up with a standard. Um, did that answer your question, Hauke? Uh, I'm not really talking about, about the standard, but more or less um, uh, uh, and, and, uh, well integrated um, uh, open source solution. Um, or tier 69 stack. Well, so uh, well Wojtek, can, in, Wojtek can you talk the, about uh, can you talk about where Soft at Home stands in open sourcing your stack? Uh, so um, what I can say is that uh, regarding our um, willingness to do that, nothing changed. So that that's something uh, that we promised and uh, th that it will be done. The, the I would say that our main problem is, you know, to to um, to find the right resources to make the, the necessary technical efforts to, to go forward. So that, that's the, the main problem and especially that uh, we know that, you know, there is still um, a, a, a a gap that has to be fulfilled in order to have it really integrated and not just available as a separate uh, set of components. So um, uh, technically um, there is some job that has to be done and at the present moment I, it's really hard for me to, to say when, when I will have the, the right resources to go forward, okay. And our problem is that, the, that we, <laughs> once again, just recently we won uh, several new customers and you can imagine that any uh, request for resources working on, uh, on, on actual customer projects uh, have a higher priority, so that, that's, that, that's it. So. I know that it's not satisfying as a sensor, but that's the reality uh, that, that we face. Uh, is it so is it possible though to provide access to what's been done so far, or perhaps that everybody on this call already has access? Uh, that's the current state. Yeah, so that requires the first phase with a uh, with a small amount of effort from our side, and um, it it has been submitted again to to a schedule for development for somebody to at least do a small follow up of that, and um, it, this has to be feasible at some point in time in the in the near future. I would uh, uh, especially if there's a possibility that uh, that perhaps we we use some um, some external resources from outside the company. Uh, so that, that has to be feasible. Um, unfortunately, it won't be too useful because it will practically only work with the PCB backend, which we will provide as well, uh, PCB being ARBA. 
Um, the interesting thing about Skull, and which is why we've been looking at it, is actually that that, that can bridge the gap. That could solve the problem, but then that's a larger engineering resource, and we really need to have our stack integrate entirely with Skull, which I think is feasible. That's, it's from that point of view that I've uh, looked at, uh, at the Skull implementation and that I've uh, given my feedback. Um, so first step, yeah, we really need to get the code pushed in, in a repository that's accessible to the, to the other members, uh, for sure. And the second step, we'll see what we can do as quickly as possible. In terms of the actual use cases, are, have these been more real-time use cases or the management type use cases that have so far been discussed um, with regard to the event management? So, for example, um, we've been having a discussion about Wi-Fi, and especially in a, in a multi-Wi-Fi scenario, you might want to, um, and, and these high-level or low-level APIs, you might want to be able to use some events in order to be able to determine which, uh, in a, in a multi-access point uh, scenario, which uh, access point the uh, device should be connected to. However, the other scenario would be much more management type of scenario where you know the user changes the SSID and obviously that would also require an event change but it's not it's not a real-time uh, application so so what are the applications that have been discussed well in this case we're talking about just the TR69 stack and the uh, and the management at that level um, the TR69 protocol is, is developed in such a way that um, mention of the world's real time in the same sentence is a bit, uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's, it's a bit far off. Uh, but for sure, there is uh, the ability of a, of a TR181 mapping of the data model of the, uh, of the wireless access points. And that has to be feasible for sure. I can't talk about UBUS and UCI there, but with our, our stack, we do have um, well, most of the TR181 uh, wireless unmapping and then a huge amount of extensions to be able to get an enormous amount of statistics and information on, uh, on devices and the access points and to also be able to configure and provision uh, the, uh, the wireless LAN on the gateway from an ACS. Felix, do you have any feedback on this? I mean, I don't know. Well, one, one thing that I uh, wanted to point out earlier, especially regarding the uh, issue of having a well-integrated tier 69 client. So when I wrote the, the internal predecessor to SCAL, um, I, it, intentional, I, I wrote this uh, specifically for having a tier 69 client, which we needed to support some customers. And I've actually, for the old version, I built a TR69 client that goes along with it and uh, that uses something very similar to what we have in SCAL now um, to, uh, to access the data model. So if it's of interest to have a really simple TR69 client that connects directly to SCAL um, and that supports all the basic infrastructure, uh, one thing I could do is I could uh, uh, talk with uh, people from the company and see if I can get that code ported to SCAL and opened up and uh, to kind of serve as a reference case of how to use SCAL for a tier 69 client. I think that's a really interesting idea, Felix, uh, and I'd welcome it. I also just want to say that I talked to, with Pasquale at ADB yesterday, and their intent still is to open source their code as well, but they, uh, similar to Soft at Home, have additional work that they feel needs to be done uh, before that will be useful. Uh, but uh, I welcome your idea, Felix, as a, as a starting point. Other comments? I agree. I, it would be nice to see a reference implementation. So I could uh, set that, set up a proposal for doing that as kind of a next next milestone in uh, the progress of SCAL itself. And uh, I mean, I have to talk with some people before, but I think this is going to go over well. Um, and if 
yeah, if you're in, uh, interested, I'll I'll try to get it set up as soon as possible so I can start working on this. All right. That that sounds good. Uh, I, I don't. W with this, would there be much uh, work on the in event uh, topic, or is this do you think separate of that, Felix? I think this is uh, separate of that. Okay. Maybe we need to defer uh, the whole event implementation until people have actually provided some more ideas. Um, the TR69 client that I'm building uh, will be able to work with the code that I've written so far, so it, it will be able to handle TR69 eventing uh, with uh, little or no modification to scale the way that it is now. All right. Okay. Does so it sound good for everyone else, or is that a good 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 step forward? It sounds really good to me, and I look forward to seeing the proposal, Felix. Great. Awesome. Well, thank you. All right. Well, we we have a plan there. Um. Next thing, uh, the carrier interest group update. Uh, the we had talked about the Wi-Fi API discussion. Uh. I uh, had talked with Felix, um, and he confirmed just for this meeting that uh, he can actually do this as part of the next Purple WRT meeting. As we had previously requested, um, I had asked Felix to do a uh, short presentation on the difference between U-Bus and D-Bus, because that was, that was some folks had requested to understand that a little better. Um, as a way to uh, make it a little bit easier for everybody, we, we will do the Wi-Fi API discussion that people had wanted to do, we'll do that um, for the carrier interest group, we'll do that right after the U-Bus, D-Bus discussion, so it will extend the Purple WRT meeting next week um, by a half an hour, just to, uh, to fit that in. Uh, sound good to everyone? Yeah. Very well. Okay, good. Yeah. Great. Um, the other thing uh, is I have contacted uh, a number of the chipset folks uh, to get their feedback on an in-person meeting for the carrier interest group. Uh, one thing that would be helpful, I think. Excuse me, Eric. Excuse me, Eric. Would oh, hey it be there. possible on that, yeah, that you bus bus discussion next week to yep. schedule that first in the meeting in case there are people who want to join that and don't normally join this call? Yes, absolutely. I can do. We can do that first, without a doubt. Okay. Shouldn't be a Great. problem. Okay. Um, the uh, the next thing with the care interest group in-person meeting, I would encourage folks, uh, I think I should talk to uh, Wojtek, but also the other members of the care interest group, is, is would it would be helpful uh, to get a sense of um, a, a clear agenda, um, even if it's early, so that uh, the people that need to travel can, can really tell their management why they're asking for travel. Um, but uh, so, Wojtek, could could I work with you maybe in the next few days to kind of kind of work out what we think that might be, and I'll have to work with Pasquale as well. Yes, sir. Okay. For me, the goal would be, you know, to uh, to push as far as possible our Wi-Fi API discussions, and as this kind of topic is about architecture, etc. Usually, it's good to have people uh, around the same table or and they're writing things and uh, agreeing on uh, at the end. Okay, so I would say that's the major uh, goal I see. Okay, sounds good. I will uh, we'll talk a little bit more about that and uh, and work that out. Um, so that's kind of the plan on the on the in-person meeting. I'm still getting some feedback from the chipset folks on on availability and and things like that. Uh. I don't think there's anything else for carrier interest group. Any comments on that? Uh, Eric, will you send around an email for the meeting next week? Or is it was this the official invite? Oh, no, I, I will send around an email, yes. Absolutely. Okay. okay. Um, since this is, it's not, it's going to be a little bit different than normal, yeah. Definitely will. Okay. Oh, excuse me, that, that meeting on the 23rd, is that going to be a face-to-face -face meeting, or is that something that's, I, I, I'm a little bit confused. Oh no! The CIG meeting. No, 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 no. The 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 March 23rd meeting is going to be the this normal purple WRT uh, 
go to meeting. Um, okay. Then, when is when is the face-to-face uh, -face meeting planned for? Or has anything been decided on that? No, no. We I'm I'm asking to get availability, particularly from the chipset folks, since it was pretty important that they okay. be able to make it. Uh, the tentative time was uh, the end of April. Um, we'll see if that actually happens. It may be a little may go into May. We'll we will have to see though. Is this the one that was planned in um, together with the Berkeley event, or is this something that's uh, totally different? This is the to, to clarify. This is this is different. Originally, we were going to do it with the Berkeley event. We were going to kind of bring people together. That got since the Berkeley event got pushed out because of um, some scheduling issues with our, one of the groups we were going to work with, the IOTSF. Um, we're going to do this separate of that because we the Berkeley event's going to get pushed into probably September. Okay. That makes okay. Sense. All right. I hope I got everything clarified now. I know there's a lot of different meetings here, so I, I apologize if, if something wasn't clear. All right. Anything else any other questions, comments? Uh, the uh, purple feed for uh, OpenWRT and LEAD. Um, I I don't have any updates there. Uh, Bruce, have you have you heard anything from your side on on the um, the package that uh, Inteno slash uh, Satura are going to post? No, the only thing um, I've been on vacation, uh, oh, okay. so that and I, I'm just getting back now. Uh, the information I got that I, that I said at the last meeting was we're targeting the beginning of April. Mm -hmm. That I haven't had any information that that's been changed. Okay, sounds good. I would uh, encourage everybody to uh, consider posting um, or or suggesting packages that you think make sense uh, for that. Um, I, I think the things like the potentially the 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 soft at home stack or the ADB stack, uh, depending upon whether it can be made public. Uh, preferably, if it's if it's made public as uh, as quickly as possible. Um, it'd be great to have that out there. All right. Um, any other comments or questions on the purple feed? All right. Uh, board farm updates. Uh, nothing from my end. Zhao, I, um, any updates from you? Zhao, we can't hear you. We could hear you before. Is it just me, or can other people hear Zhao? Nope. No, Are you I listening? Are you listening? Oh, no? I can hear you. Is Hello? it okay now? Yes, we can hear you. Okay, nice, fine. Oh. Uh, so basically, I was saying that I have just sent you an email some at, at the start of this call, uh, pretty much summarizing what we have been doing. Um, unfortunately, we are still uh, analyzing and discussing how we will contribute, but I can tell you right now that uh, uh, we, ha we had a look on the documentation and open WRT Summit uh, lightning videos on the board farm and basically uh, our understanding is that this is a distributed testing framework uh, which supports the configuration of multiple nodes, for example, putting some on the LAN, wireless, and LAN. This is something that um, uh, is pretty much aligned with uh, what we have been doing and uh, makes sense in our perspective. Uh, we also learned that this uh, came as a response to the lack of automated testing, uh, so you are looking for something like this. and but. It's still not uh, clear for us what is uh, the scope of, of the test. I mean, we have drilled down into the test folder and found some some files regarding UPnP, Samba, curls, iperf. Um, but can you can you shed some light here and tell us what what is your goal? What is what is your roadmap? Are you planning to include functional testing, uh, long run testing, security, performance? Uh, well, I mean, I'm, I don't lead the project, so I mean, I can't, I can't speak for for uh, Michael and, and Matthew. But I mean, I think we're open to anything. I mean, if it, if it, if it, uh, the goal is to come up within within open source, 
uh, testing framework for OpenWRT lead really any embedded Linux boxes. Um, and in prior to this, there there was basically nothing um, that that could just be automated. Uh, so I mean, I think the tests are, are for the most part, are tend to be pretty. Um, the ones that are available tend to be pretty basic. They're not they're not super complex, although some of them are are you know some of the the performance ones are pretty you know get get a little more complex. But but I think that. Security testing is is certainly something that seems to be potentially the kind of low hanging fruit. I think it would be really interesting to do like uh, some sort of uh, penetration testing, automated penetration testing, things like that. Um, I, I don't think know if we necessarily have a have a um, a really hardened roadmap. I think it's it's very much dependent upon uh, who wants to contribute and what they want to do. Okay, maybe I. Maybe I can share with you some things that uh, we have been doing, and you can, you can tell me if it makes sense to to include this or not. But uh, basically, something that uh, uh, we usually do is, for example, we run some Wi-Fi tests, and we we connect one uh, device to the LAN Ethernet switch. Then we we run iPerfs as well, downloads, uploads, different MTUs different protocols, different uh, Wi-Fi standards and so on, then we include all these samples. Um, we also have some um, long runs and stress testing, for example. Uh, we, we load some torrents, we measure the CPU, the memory usage, the swap usage, the number of processes, the app time. Uh, we run some UPnPs as well, open some pages run some pings, measure the latency, the jitter, the, the packet loss, uh, and this is um, the sort of things that we are doing and we are not sure if uh, this is, uh, if it makes sense to, to include this on what you are doing. I think almost all of those are either things that are um, in a board farm. There's like some of those you mentioned, there's like, I, I can actually think of like some of the, um, some of the tests are in board farm. There doesn't tend to be as much of the the long run, like you know, run things for a long period of time kind of tests, as much as that that I've seen. Um, I'm not quite sure how that would fit into how board farm works because it kind of assumes that tests aren't going to run that long. Uh, so I think that may be a more ambitious feature. That's not that I think it's a good feature, um, something that should be looked into it for board farm. But a lot of those, the, like you know, testing the performance, there are tests for that, or they're one, or they, or um, they either you're you can add to that and, and add more testing and add additional features to tests that already exist, or add new tests. So I think that a lot of that makes very makes a lot of sense. Okay, and let me just add one of the reasons why maybe this helps. One of the reasons why we perform this long run test is uh, because uh, we have some gateways here at the lab where we they are not necessarily open at WRT, but mm -hmm. we we see, we see that after some some three days of usage or something, they tend to reboot, and this is something that the end customer oh. hates. Obviously, we just. Uh, we just uh, found here that we have a device here at the lab that whenever we perform UPnP uh, at port mappings and so on, there's a me memory leak. So the, the C if you reboot the device, it starts with the roughly 65% uh, memory usage. We mm -hmm. collect these uh, values using the, the free and the top tools, but after uh, doing some UPnP ports, like uh, we open 10 ports, the memory increases by 1% till the device eventually reaches 99% and then it reboots. So uh, this is uh, um, the sort of test that uh, we are doing and uh, we, need, we need you to, to, to tell us if it makes sense or, or not. That's, that's an interesting question. Kathy, uh, uh, do you know if that was, this was done at Qualcomm at all? Anything like this? Um, yeah, there are some. There are definitely some of those longer range or you know stress testing that goes over a long period of time. I don't know if they didn't incorporate it in Board Farm. It might have been a separate series of tests okay. in a separate test bed. But uh, for Open WRT, I think yeah, you definitely want stress test and long term tests. 
um, just for stability and reliability, like Absolutely. you say, on an operational basis. So I, I love the idea of, I, th I think where you should start is just take one of your existing tests of however you're testing and look at how, you know, what does it take to, to throw it into the scripting model of the board farm? Is that a difficult task? Is it pretty easy once you understand uh, sort of the differences between your your own test bed? Is it is it scripted? If it's scripted command line like, then it should be pretty easy to put it in board farm because there's a lot of just um, p expect some some of these you know where whatever you could type on a command they sort of automate that with this scripting. Uh, we, 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 uh, I think we have uh, the same approach. What we did is we developed our own test manager. Then we have um, we developed in Python as well. Every test case has a, a setup method, a teardown. Then it has the run, and the run is usually uh, composed of several. Uh, P expects, and sometimes we have some libraries that we have developed of our own. For example, um, because there are some, because there are multiple test cases that we want to monitor how the system is is coping. For for example, measure the CPU usage, the memory usage, and so on. We developed a class which we call it uh, CP monitor or so on, and we implement these methods, and then we reuse these classes. On the on the test case, and so I think it shouldn't be that hard to to include them uh, on board farm. Uh, the thing is, um, uh, we still haven't uh, came uh, up to a point where uh, we still haven't finished how we plan to contribute. And the reason why I open this uh, discussion is to to try to understand. Uh, what makes sense for you? What and try to expand in a little bit of what we are doing. Mm -hmm. But yes, I would say that it shouldn't be hard to put what we have on board farm. I, okay. Yeah, I, I think that you basically uh, what what we would like to see is somebody take over more active management of board farm, and you can morph it into whatever works best in general for anybody doing this types of testing. You know racks of equipment, and uh, um, you know morph it into what what works best for your team, so that you can take it on and actively management manage it. I mean that was the whole idea with with QCA opening it up, and it didn't get adopted by too many people because they probably had their own way of doing things. But if you can merge your way with this way and and essentially keep it up to date. Um, that's what we really want is to move forward with something that anybody can pick up and use pretty easily. Okay, sounds sounds fair. I will. Um, I, I took some notes here. I will discuss with uh, uh, with the team. Um, I haven't mentioned, but uh, we are also discussing with Pedro Pedro Santos, with which which isn't here today, but uh, he's also in this uh, discussion. Awesome. Yeah. No, I, I think I think Kathy Kathy's right. Is that that we're we're very open to you know particularly uh, anybody t you know taking on a more active management role and and uh, turning turning Board Farm into what what it needs to be, which is which is it's a really cool platform, but it can do so much more, and I think we all realize that. Okay. Thanks for the clarification. Definitely. Right. Uh, any other comments or questions on Board Farm? This actually brings up an interesting question, uh, Walter and uh, and Bruce. How do your companies do do automated testing? For wow, yeah, <laughs> we we do a huge amount, and we um, we have. Um, I guess somewhat similar framework for uh, automated tests, uh, where we have a uh, Jenkins uh, system set up that uh, drives all the different uh, builds that are being done in continuous integration or for projects. Uh, as the end of those Jen Jenkins jobs will get pushed, then get pushed to our um, individual test setups. And I'm not the expert on this, but uh, but the expert is uh, sitting in the next room. Well. 
well, when she is, she's gone home already. Um, and uh, there, a power switch is used to bring up specifically a board in a setup, uh, which is connected via all sorts of cables. And uh, the image is flashed on it automatically. Um, and a whole bunch of automated tests are then done, which feeds back into the Jenkins to see if it's OK or not. Uh, besides that, there are various other automated tests um, that are created for, those are a number of basic tests, but there are various other uh, automated test uh, frameworks uh, for specific things. Voice over IP is a bit specific. Uh, IoT devices uh, interaction is a bit specific, uh, etc. And uh, those, there we have the teams having their own setups and, and running them by themselves. Uh, so it, it's very familiar, at least I haven't been really been following up on board, board form, but what you're doing seems um, very typical. What mm -hmm. we're doing is not that, not that strange either. Okay. Bruce, do you have any insight into how Inteno does this? or? No, unfortunately I don't, but it's okay. a good question for me to ask Inteno, so I'm going to do that. Okay, thank you. I, it, it, just, it just seems that it, it sounds like uh, Everybody's doing this. I mean, it would be good for us all to kind of just work together on this, and because I would think that this is a lot of, a lot of, in general, wasted work for all of our members and the industry as a whole. So, um, I, we can talk some more, but maybe there's a way to bring in more people, particularly from our members. But in general, I mean, see if we can reduce some of this cost for our members by uh, not reusing as much work and things like that. Uh, by the way, um, are, does Board Barn currently support an ETR69 uh, test case? No, it, it, there are no tests for TR69. Okay, and this, uh, has this ever been uh, discussed? Uh, I'll get, the background is it was discussed at one point. Uh, the problem, in fact, it was strongly discussed. The, biggest problem that we had was that was that to do it you had to have an ACS and we weren't quite sure how to do that it you know because it, it sounded like they were all very different and there were a lot of issues involved there yes we we've been looking at uh, some there's genius ACS for example it is uh, an open source um, uh, ACS but uh, I see I we haven't explored it uh, deeply but uh, it has a REST API, and uh, if it supports all the basic methods like uh, uh, get parameter values, set parameter values, reboot, on on, and so on, it shouldn't be that hard to develop a set of test cases that uh, uh, communicate with the ACS, and the ACS will in turn um, run these RPCs directly on the gateway. But I was just curious to know if anybody was doing this already. Um, we are in Soft at Home. Uh, the test engineer who has written our automation framework wrote her own TR69 ACS uh, to be a, that can be controlled uh, from the automated tests. So uh, it, software upgrades are pushed automatically. Uh, our get requests are pushed automatically. It's integrated into a setup such as that's an, you know a user. They simulate the user do, making a change on the web UI and then checking via TR69 if the corresponding parameter has changed correctly, things like that. So I, I don't know the details, but we have a quite extensive setup. Um, interesting, I haven't really thought of, um, of collaborating at this level, but perhaps we should have a discussion internally to see if maybe that's something that we can offer to, to board farm. I, th I think that would be fantastic, Walter. To, to it certainly is going to help everybody if we can, because like l we've had you know three people on this call now that have mentioned they're basically doing all the same thing, uh, and that's that's certainly wasted effort for everyone because we're all doing the same thing. Um, yeah, you make it very good. All right. Okay. Well, things to think about, but please, you know, please do get some get some feedback and see if we can how we can all work together on this because I think that that uh, again, this is a, this is a good opportunity for everyone. Um, anything else on Board Farm? All right. Uh, funding open WRT projects. Uh, Art, did you want to take that? 
Sure. Um, our thoughts on funding actually rival the discussion or parallel the discussion we were having on SCAL. Uh, we'd really like to bring the SCAL project and the TRO-69 uh, implementations uh, integration to completion. Uh, it seems really a shame that we're almost there, but we haven't quite finished. So our inclination is to direct uh, funding toward those kinds of projects in the, in the next quarter. So Felix, a proposal from you is most welcome. I think we'll see a, a proposal from Luca, uh, and there may be others as well. One change this quarter is I'm trying to get industrial partners to co-fund our projects rather than uh, Purple funding them uh, in their entirety. Uh, we'll see if we're successful in doing that, but that's, that's the intent. So if anybody on the call thinks their company might be interested in co-funding with Purple some of the project work, that would be great because then we could spend more than uh, would otherwise be in our budget. I've had a lot of questions about the budget. We've been spend, spending uh, between 10,000 U.S. and 25,000 U.S. per quarter on uh, project-related spending, um, and that's entirely dependent on how the projects uh, complete and how long they take and so on. You'll recall that we funded a, a few very small projects uh, last summer and then some uh, bigger ones uh, like the SCAL project uh, in the fall. So again, uh, proposals around SCAL and TRO-69 would be most welcome, uh, and they're, I would say, the most likely to get funding. And again, if other companies want to participate to help and expand the funding pool, that would be superb. So questions? Okay. Okay. All right. Um, I guess then we'll, we'll move on to OpenWRT Summit. Um, OpenWRT Summit, not a whole lot of updates outside of the the um, uh, the idea that we were, we announced that we were going to do it in Prague last week. Uh, we announced that. Uh, there's a, a survey out on, I think, the, the uh, OpenWRT list and the lead lists on the discussion of um, excuse me, uh, which set of dates would be better. Um, we, we were going to do it around ELCE, but not uh, at ELCE, uh, partially due to cost and partially because it seemed to work better when we were not on the same days. Um, so the, the, the questions, there's a doodle out there, um, and it's particularly related to the two days uh, before ELCE, which is a Saturday, Sunday, or the or the two days after ELC, which is a Thursday, Friday, and kind of get feedback on what works best for people. That is about it there. Any comments or questions? All right. Uh, regulatory, the only thing I have there is just a, a reminder that next week, um, next weekend, I will be speaking on uh, the topic of the FCC and Wi-Fi. Uh, at uh, Libre Planet um, in Boston. Um, that's all that I have on my agenda. Um, any other comments or questions? All right. Uh, well, one thing I did want to want to bring, since we did have a few of the, uh, we had uh, having an open WRT and a uh, lead, uh, some lead members here. Is, is there any update on the uh, lead OpenWRT merge discussions? So um, it's all quiet now. <laughs> yeah, the discussion has been a bit quiet. Um, hopefully, we can get it resumed. Uh, I think for for the most part, um, we're getting on the same page again. And it's just a matter of that there's some discussion like naming and uh, maybe a few other project related detail discussions where uh, we still don't see eye to eye. But hopefully we can we can get to some form of agreement that this is uh, that we should merge as a community and just treat these as implementation details and work them out as we go along. 
um, we'll see where it goes. Yeah, from, from the OpenWRT side, I can only second what Felix has said. Sounds like a plan. All right. So, do you do you have uh, next steps on on kind of a, a formal? I, I shouldn't say formal. This is open source. There's rarely anything formal. Um, <laughs> uh, kind of a next steps and our direction on how you're how you're going to get to the the final decisions. Uh, basically, we are waiting for a couple uh, members to cast their votes who are. Uh, still um, have uh, who uh, who still haven't haven't done yet, mm -hmm. and then we will discuss what what's next. Okay, sounds good. Uh, you know, I don't need to reiterate, but if there's anything we can do to help, um, I, I think that uh, if you need help on getting uh, a person to kind of guide the discussion, I'm sure we can find somebody and to kind of uh, help. Uh, get this process to a conclusion because uh, I think it's very valuable to everyone to to um, to get to the final final result which I think is going to be a, a, an even stronger community I think that the action should be just you know Felix go reach out to anyone that you know that hasn't cast their vote and Zoltan same with you anyone you have a good rapport of hasn't cast their vote and just make sure that gets you know push that step through and and then you can move on sounds like that's the that's the next step is just push people to finish casting their votes. Definitely. I would agree. And then and then Felix's idea is perfect really. It's like, okay, we agree as a community, we want to work as a community. Um, now we agree to move forward together and work on the, you know, these final implementations that we you know, that we still need to work out. Which for the most part aren't that huge of problems that can't be solved as a community. Right. Definitely. Right. All right. Well, that's good to hear. Um, please do keep us updated, and and hopefully we'll get to that goal very soon. All right. Any other uh, comments or questions from anyone? All right. Well, uh, hearing none, then uh, I will let everybody go. Uh, See everyone next week, and we will have the the presentations on UBus, DBus, and then the discussion, the CIG discussion on the the Wi-Fi API.